Here's an example of scanning a 35 millimeter photo negative with the Plustec Optic Film 8200i SE scanner that comes bundled with the Silverfast 9 SE Plus software. First we'll grab a negative strip from our packet of negatives, being careful not to touch the um, picture area with our fingers and get fingerprints and stuff on there. So we'll pull it out just holding the negative by the area with the sprocket holes and or grabbing the edges of the negative. Then we'll want to um, put this in the negative holder with the with the shiny side up and the emulsion side down. If you're able to read the numbers and the text correctly in the film then you should be putting the correct side up. So we will open up our negative holder, place it in between these bumps and then slide the um, negatives over until our gap between the pictures is over the these plastic pieces then we will close our negative holder and press down here to snap it shut then we'll go ahead and um, blow off hopefully any dust from our negatives Now we'll go ahead and bring our um, negative film strip holder and manually put it in the scanner here. This has little notches here. This is a manual feed and manual advanced scanner, but it clicks into place nicely, so it's pretty easy to use. Now we've got our negative film strip scanner clicked in place. We're ready to go back to our computer and start the scan. Um, this scanner scans in um, 16 bits per color channel, which this software represents as 48 since there's three color channels. And then it processes the photograph using those 16 bits per color channel, but then saves in um, an 8-bit file with 8 bits per color channel, which this software represents as 24-bit. And then um, here we're scanning a negative, so we have this set to negative, although you can also choose positive or kodachrome for slides. So the first step we're going to do here is pre-scan our photo, which um, takes a low resolution scan that we can set our adjustments with before we do the final scan. So after it's done the initial scan, um, the first things I usually do is if you do need to rotate it, you can um, rotate the picture if needed, and then we can adjust these, um, the red scanning frame. Okay, so now, now that we've done that, then the next thing I usually do is um, give it a name since I can see the photograph now and know what I want to name this. I've already chosen the folder I want this saved to and I've already chosen my um, scanning resolution at 3600 um, pixels per inch which results in about a I don't know about a 15 megapixel image and then the next thing I'll adjust is the um, exposure this has a, a general exposure bar here which in my experience seems to work great if you want to lighten the picture overall um, you can click on this button here to reset it to the default settings but for some reason this slider doesn't really work well to darken a photograph in my experience so if I want to darken this just a tad I'm going to use the mid-tone slider, slider to darken it just a bit and then if I wanted to adjust the contrast or saturation there's sliders to do that but overall I'm pretty happy with the exposure 
So then the next thing I sometimes do is if you do need to um, adjust the white balance or color balance, you can use um, this tool to do that. In this case, since this was a picture taken with daylight balanced film outdoors in daylight, we don't really need to adjust the color balance, but if it was in shade or indoors or something like that, then then you would generally want to adjust the color correction. Um, you can do that in two ways. You could just grab this um, black dot and move it around, and or you can click on these um, color dots outside of the wheel to use it as a slider for, you know, cyan and red slider, magenta and green, or blue and yellow. But in this case, we don't need to adjust the color balance. Um, in this case, I'll be using the dust and scratch removal tool. I have that turned on as indicated by this check here. And also this little red dot there indicates that that's on. And what that will do is um, when we do the final scan, which I'll go ahead and start right now, um, it'll, it'll take two scans. One is it will do the regular scan of the image, and then it will take a second infrared scan. And it, the way I understand it is that um, negative film doesn't reflect infrared or capture it, but um, dust and scratches will um, hopefully um, reflect the infrared, and then this software can use that data from that infrared scan to automatically correct some of the um, dust dots on here, these white dots, and sometimes it gets scratches but um, sometimes it doesn't so it's infrared isn't perfect but it it helps so it does a lot for you but then if you did want to do final corrections you usually do have to do some final corrections so now it's scanning the infrared as you can see then once it's doing that we'll see that it will process the photo using the processing parameters we chose earlier and also combining the using the infrared scan to automatically correct some of the dust specks on this photograph. So now it's processing and saving it and it's done and we could um, check it out now. The, this software doesn't show you the final scan so if you did want to look at the final scan we can go ahead and open up the final picture to see how the infrared um, did. So it's gotten a lot of the du larger dust specks for us. It didn't really remove this um, scratch, unfortunately, but we could, you know, go into our photo editing software. And there you have it. That's an example of scanning a 35 millimeter photo negative with the Plustech Optic Film 8200i SE scanner that comes bundled with the Silverfast 9 SE Plus software.